When we think about the issues that impact women today, a problem that might easily come to mind is the gender wage gap, or the difference in pay between working men and women. However, did you know that there is another gender gap? One that affects the health and well-being of women and girls around the world? Despite rapid advances in the field of medicine over the last century, the needs and physiology of women have been and continue to be overlooked within the healthcare system. Women have been excluded from scientific research and are underserved in fields such as cardiac and mental health. This is the gender health gap, and it is a huge obstacle for all women, especially those in marginalized communities. In this video, you will learn about four major healthcare inequities that are currently contributing to the gender health gap and how you can help close the gap, whether you're a student, a healthcare professional, or a concerned citizen. The first inequity we will discuss is the gender gap in healthcare research. The exclusion of women in research has been a major historical contributor to the health gap and continues to have an impact today. It wasn't until 1993 that women were required to be included in most healthcare research studies. Studies that did include women before this time were overwhelmingly related to reproductive science, showing a failure of the scientific community to recognize that the spectrum of a woman's health extends much farther than her ability to have children. The exclusion of women from research into other fields of healthcare was also due in part to the theory that the cycling of hormones made them imperfect candidates for research, although hormone cycling takes place in men as well. The result of this faulty logic is that most healthcare research carried out in the 20th century was done on young white men. The implications of this lack of diversity are still felt today. Countless drugs that are still used have only been tested on men leaving women susceptible to care that is less effective or even harmful. Women are more likely to experience adverse reactions to antihistamines, antibiotics, and many other classes of drugs. For example, antiarrhythmic drugs pose a greater risk of causing a potentially lethal cardiac rhythm in women. This historical exclusion of women from research has not only affected our knowledge of the mechanisms of certain drugs, but also means that the scientific community is behind when it comes to understanding other domains of women's health. Moving forward, healthcare research must fill the gap in our knowledge of how differences in biological sex impact disease pathways and health outcomes. This leads us to the second health gap inequity in this video, the differential care and outcomes experienced by women when it comes to chronic health conditions. On average, women live longer than men, but with a lesser quality of life. Women are more likely to suffer from multiple chronic conditions throughout their lives. By age 80, the number of women experiencing two or more chronic conditions is twice as high as men of the same age. Chronic conditions such as autoimmune disorders are a major issue that disproportionately affect the health of women. In fact, it is estimated that 80% of people who suffer from autoimmune diseases are women. While diabetes currently affects more men than women, recent research shows that women between the ages of 20 and 49 have seen the largest relative increase in incidence of diabetes over the last decade. Young women with diabetes are at a higher lifetime risk of complications from the disease and are also susceptible to other health issues including complications during pregnancy and reproductive problems. Chronic pain is also more common in women than men especially with respect to musculoskeletal, neuropathic, abdominal, and migraine-related conditions. Though pain experienced by women is more likely to be reported as severe and long-lasting, it is not typically treated as aggressively as pain in men. Compared to men, it is more likely that doctors will consider pain in women as a psychological issue, and this affects the care women receive. Women with chronic pain are more likely to be referred to a therapist, rather than a pain clinic for treatment. Cardiac health is one of the foremost domains of the gender health gap. Although heart disease is often considered a man's problem, it is in fact the leading cause of death among women and kills more women than men each year. Despite this, women make up only 35% of those studied in cardiovascular research, and many drugs that affect the cardiovascular system have only ever been tested on men. 
lack of awareness of the risk of heart disease in women results in under-detection of these conditions, as women are often unfamiliar with their unique risk factors and symptoms. A prime example of this is the heart attack. Many people are aware of the hallmark symptoms of a heart attack, which include chest pain, pain in the arms, back, jaw, or stomach, and nausea. However, it has been found that these symptoms are more often experienced by men, and that only one-third of women experience these symptoms during a heart attack. Rather than chest pain or discomfort, women will often have symptoms such as unusual fatigue or sleep disturbance in the weeks leading up to their heart attack. At the time of the attack, women may experience shortness of breath, weakness, and fatigue rather than chest pain, pressure, and tightness. After a heart attack, women are 36% less likely to take part in cardiac rehabilitation, a figure that grows depending on a woman's social circumstances, family obligations, and cultural biases. This leads us to the last domain of the gender health gap that we will discuss in this video, the social determinants of women's health. The health gap is much wider for some women than others. Factors that contribute to this disparity include socioeconomic status, geographic location, and race and ethnicity. Socioeconomic status, or SES, as measured by education, occupation, and income, contributes to increased morbidity and mortality for women when it comes to several conditions, including heart disease. More women than men live in poverty, and women from low SES backgrounds are more likely to suffer from health concerns such as anxiety, stress, maternal health problems, and postpartum depression. Women from low SES backgrounds also face greater barriers accessing healthcare and are less likely to be screened for breast and cervical cancers. Compared to urban women, rural women have much higher mortality rates. Women living in rural areas often lack access to childcare and other healthcare services that women living in densely populated areas have access to. Lack of access to care is especially problematic for pregnant women, who often must travel large distances to receive maternity care. In these situations, women may need to choose whether to pay for travel to urban centers and lodging or to have a home birth with a risk of difficult labor and health emergencies. Race and ethnicity also play a role in the health of women. For example, rates of diabetes are three to five times higher for Canada's indigenous women, and mortality related to women's cancers also varies with ethnicity. Further, more effort must be directed into eliminating racism, discrimination, and systematic oppression in healthcare and the impact that these factors have on the mental health and the ability to access care for countless women. The four issues discussed in this video are by no means an extensive list of all the aspects of the women's health gap. Women's access to care can also be influenced by childcare responsibilities and work scheduling conflicts. Women are also disproportionately affected by domestic violence and sexual assault and are more susceptible to health consequences associated with substance abuse and addiction. The health gap is a threat to the health of all women. Although the situation is serious, impressive initiatives are underway to support women's health. And no matter who you are, there are actions you can take to close the health gap. As a student, you can educate yourself about the gap and think critically about how our existing knowledge of physiology and pharmacology has been generated with a focus on men. Women's College Hospital, the Project for an Ontario Women's Health Evidence Report, and the National Institutes of Health are just a few of the organizations in North America that have made extensive research and resources available to the public. Healthcare professionals should be conscious of the exclusion and bias that continues to affect healthcare for women. One must recognize that some treatments and medications work differently for men and women, and risk factors and symptoms of disease also vary by gender. Researchers should design studies that account for sex and gender or explain why these variables are not incorporated into their research. Once sex-based data is collected and characterized, it should be reported and screened for patterns that may carry gender-based healthcare implications. There are many resources available to researchers from the National Institutes of Health and Women's College Hospital who even offer consultation services for researchers when it comes to examining sex as a biological variable. If you are a citizen who would like to help shrink the health gap, 
you can familiarize yourself with the gender differences in disease risk factors and symptoms and share this information with your family and friends. You can also volunteer or donate to the previously mentioned organizations or other services that advocate for the health of women. Further, you can petition for your local or national government representatives to ensure that adequate healthcare resources are available to women in underserved and remote communities. With awareness, effort, and collaboration, we can make sure that everyone can receive the healthcare they need, regardless of gender.